Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a review and five looks on the Violet Voss hashtag palette. I am going to be doing this video in collaboration with my friend Samantha. She also happened to pick up this palette. We got it at totally separate times, but we seem to be headed towards a review around about the same time. She is an amazing friend and YouTuber. She moved to Toronto, I can't remember how many years ago it was now, but we became good friends right out of the gate mostly because I made her be friends with me. I was like, hey, you're moving here. Let's hang out. She puts out content so consistently. This woman works incredibly hard. So if you like beauty reviews, makeup tutorials, try-ons, lifestyle, she started doing, um, well, she's done vlogs forever, but she started doing like what I eat in a day videos. Go show her some love because her content is fantastic. And of course, I'll be linking to her down below, so please go sure to check Samantha out because she'll also be talking about this palette. So let's get into this palette. What is it? Well, Violet Voss was pretty much known as an indie brand. They were a brand that I'd only ever really become familiar with via iMats and perhaps a little bit through Instagram. They are now sold at Sephora, which is incredible because I never really thought that indie brands would ever make it into Sephora, but the world is kind of changing. So it's opened up a lot of opportunities for smaller brands to put their products in a mainstream retailer. I have traditionally picked up my Violet Voss palettes at iMats. I picked up the Holy Grail palette at iMats New York, I think it was last year. And then I picked up this hashtag palette at iMats LA in January. I was not especially taken with the Holy Grail palette, which surprised me because the colors in it are beautiful and they're right up my alley. But for whatever reason, I always felt like the looks I created with it were just never that great. So I was a little bit concerned when I picked up this palette because I was just, I don't know, when you have a not so great experience with one palette, you're like, well, am I just not working with those shadows very well? Or is it the consistency of the product? Well, I am happy to report that I am absolutely in love with this palette and I can't really find fault with it. So that may be the entire review summed up in one sentence, but we're gonna talk through why I love this so much. The palette looks like this. It has a Violet Voss embossed on the front and it is a little bit thicker than the previous palette that I have, the Holy Grail one. Um, don't really know why that is. It, in appearance, looks pretty much the same. When you open it, you get a big mirror up top, but it is really flimsy. The back of the palette just has their hashtag and then it says their website as well as 2017 All Rights Reserved. There is nowhere on this that says how many grams of product are in here and I couldn't find that information on their website either. If I do find it after when I'm editing this video, I will put it down here. The Violet Voss hashtag palette retails for $60 Canadian, which is a little bit up there, especially for an indie brand, but I understand that they need to perhaps make a little bit more money because they don't have a plethora of products available to them to sell to customers. On the plus side, you are getting 20 shades, which is above and beyond any other palette that I can think of. Most of them stop around 12. They describe this as a warm cranberry eyeshadow palette that can be used for day or night. That statement always makes me laugh because any makeup can be used for day or night. And when I look at this palette, I'm not sure I necessarily see this as a cranberry palette. And I had to look just down my phone right now to make sure I wasn't looking at the Holy Grail palette because I would have called that a warm cranberry palette. So maybe they've just got the wrong description on the Sephora site. And looking at this a little bit more closely, I guess I would say that these are cranberry, but like I wouldn't refer to this whole palette as warm cranberry toned. Warm? Sure. Cranberry tone? Nah, not so much sold on that. Anyway, let's talk about the actual shadows. So this top row up here is all neutrals, which is so handy and so appreciated. You have your typical brow bone shade, which is not too pale, thankfully. Sometimes you can get a brow bone shade that is just too white and it doesn't I don't know, it doesn't help me on my brows. It's almost too pale for me. And then these three shades in here are what I would consider traditional transition colors. I can use any of these on the upper crease and get a very nice sort of like carved out um, deepness to my lack of a crease. And then there's a matte black on the end, which is very much appreciated. This black works out very, very nicely with this entire palette. Sometimes I feel like a black can be too stark, but this worked out really, really well, deepening up some of the brighter colors down here. Aside from the top row, you do only have two more matte shades, and that is Goals here, which is a slightly deeper orange, and then TBT here, which is a 
deeper purple, but it's got a lot of red in it. It looks a little bit redder on camera than I think it actually is in the palette. It's coming across on camera anyway. I would have appreciated one more matte color that was a very dark rusty red that maybe would have gone with these cranberry tones over here that would have helped to deepen those up. I think that's one of the things that this palette is potentially missing. And the other thing I need to mention is that this has no real inner corner highlight color. There is the bright yellow over here, but aside from that, you have no champagne, you have no pearl that is like a metallic sheen that you can put on your inner corner. Almost every single time I opted to put uh, Truth on the inner corner just so I would have a little bit of brightness to my eye, but that is pretty much your only option for really brightening up that inner corner. I found the texture of all of these shimmer shades to be absolutely consistent with each other, which is phenomenal. They are pigmented, smooth, creamy, and pack so much color without being dusty or powdery. Now I did find that the matte shades did have a little bit of powderiness in them. That does not bother me. I like that in an eyeshadow because it means I'm going to get a little bit more color pigment pickup on my brush, but some people... I don't know, I feel like some people really just don't like that, but I'm a fan of it. The shimmers had no powder kick up as far as I could tell. I tend to press my brush pretty heavily in the pan and then apply it thickly to my lid, but I didn't really have anything poofing up on me. I do really like how this palette is broken up visually. It is very appealing to me and I find it very inspiring. When a palette has this sort of like color gradient, it really makes me see the color and how I can put it on my eyes. I like that it has a top row of mattes that are all neutral that everybody can use. I like how the rows from there on in are all set out by color families. So you've got a yellow through orange and a bit of a deep um, rusty sort of amber color. Then you've got a row of oranges that go into <laughs> their cranberry tones. And then you've got this gorgeous row of purples down here. All of these colors work so well together and it's really nice to see such a heavily warm palette have so many purples in here because these colors of purples work really well with yellows or oranges. There are some fairly unique colors in here too that really took me by surprise. This relevant color, which um, it's funny, in person just looks like a purple with a bit of a sheen, but I can see in the monitor that it's showing up the blue reflect that surprised the crap out of me when I put it on my eyes. I put it on the lid and was like, where did that blue come from? So it's interesting to me that the camera is picking it up because in person this just looks like a normal purple color. So that one is fantastic. I really love Living. That is one of those gorgeous all over the lid shades. Put that on with one of the purples in the outer corner and you've got a dynamite look. I really like the two oranges together. Savage and Goals work really, really nicely for a crease shade. So I'm wearing them right now. I've got Savage sort of on the higher part and then I've got Goals on the lower part and I really like how the graduation of color sort of fades out between the two. The two shades that I might find the most interchangeable in this palette would be Truth and Lady Boss. Truth is a bit more of a bright yellow, whereas Lady Boss has a little bit more orange in it, but truth be told, it doesn't look that different on the lid, so I think one of those could be swapped out or the pigment could have been made a little bit more orange in that one. They're both beautiful shades, but I think one of them could have been kept and one of them could have just been made like a really pale gold that would have been used as an inner corner highlight. And the last one I want to highlight down here is TBT. I use this all the time in the outer corner, probably because it's matte and it's quite deep, but this one worked out really well in the outer corner and sometimes it would add I love you or I-L-Y in that outer corner just to deepen it up and it was beautiful. I've talked your head off about the shadows, so let's take a closer look at them swatched out on my arm.
seen the swatches, let me walk you through the five looks that I created using this palette. The first look ended up being quite similar to what I have on today, but that wasn't totally intentional. However, it is a look that I really enjoy. And this one has Savage through the crease, Goals through the middle of the crease, Lady Boss on the inner third of the eye and the lower lash line, FOMO on the middle third of the lid, TBT on the outer corner, and of course, pulled down along my lower lash line. And then I have Fresh on the brow bone and then Truth on the inner corner. For look number two, I decided to stick with all the purples. So I have Sunset through the crease, Relevant on the lid, and inner corner and along the lower lash line. And this is the color that I found out looked quite blue, which surprised me. And then Life is on the outer corner and along the lower lash line. And then I use the black ILY on the outer corner to help deepen up life. I also have Fresh on the brow bone. For my third look, I have Savage on the crease and then Goals on the outer corner. I put No Filter on the lid and then Truth on the inner corner and then used ILY on the outer corner once again just to deepen that up a little bit more. For look number four, I have Sauce through the crease, Living on the lid, FOMO on the inner corner, TBT and goals mixed together through the outer corner and pulled through the crease. And then again, I have the black ILY in the very outer corner. For today's look, I have Savage through the top of my crease and then goals through the middle of my crease. I have Truth all over the inner corner of my eye and I did pull it all the way to the halfway point and put TBT on the outer corner, but then I decided that I needed a color to transition between the two, so I used a low key to transition between Truth and TBT. I also have a Fresh on the brow bone and then I just sort of replicated the colors on my lid onto my lower lash line, so Truth is on the inner corner and then on the middle of the lower lash line is low key with TBT in the outer corner. So those are all five looks using this palette and two of them did end up being quite similar but there was about a two week gap between when I created the looks and I didn't realize that they were so similar. That being said, this is the kind of look that I wanna see every time I pull up this palette. It has everything you need in here to create this kind of sunset look and you can also break it off by just doing purples, just doing oranges, just, just doing yellows and heck, if you need something for the office and you don't like wearing color, that whole top row is there for you. I have no complaints about the pigmentation of this palette. I think the color selection is phenomenal. The only thing, like I said earlier, is that they could have potentially had a more reasonable inner corner color and maybe a deeper red shade that was a matte color, but that's really nitpicking. And honestly, I don't need those colors to make this palette work. So for me, this is honestly one of the best palettes that I have picked up in recent memory. So I know that at 60 Canadian, it's a lot of money to spend on what is considered an indie brand. But again, I just have to point out just how much product is in here. There's 20 eyeshadows and the variety is quite large. Now I think it does retail for 45 in the US and I'm not really sure what I paid at IMATS. I don't feel like the discount was that high, so it might've been 40 bucks American. This is available only online at Sephora as far as I'm aware, and it is currently sold out on the Violet Voss website, but for has stock so you could pick it up there. I know it's only April and maybe it's too early to say this but I think that this might be like one of my favorite palette launches of the year just because it's got such a variety in here. I'm so so pleased with this thing. So in conclusion yes I really really like the hashtag palette and I am so so happy that I picked it up. Let me know if you're gonna be picking up this palette. Let me know if the colors interest you and I will catch you next time. Bye!